And just get on here so we have about a minute to grab all of your props and all of your things that you're going to want to use. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started. If you have a blanket, if you have a couple blocks, um, my name is Taylor. If you haven't practiced with me before, um, I'm here at Loveland Yoga and Core Fitness in the studio. I'm really excited to start transitioning back into the studio. Um, and we're going to be starting to introduce a few classes, so keep on the lookout for that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of class, about how um, we're going to start signing up and introducing classes again into the studio. <clears throat> but for now, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is Yoga for Beginners. We'll start in a comfortable seated position. So I thought um, for practice today, for this month, I've been focusing on the heart chakra in my classes. Um, specifically just sitting with whatever we feel in there. We hold a lot of emotions, a lot of experiences, trauma, good, bad, the ugly, all of that in there. Mm -hmm. So I've been focusing on just sitting with that, all the emotions, all the new feelings and things that have been coming up for us during this time and getting yourself time to sit with and process those things as we are all navigating these new waters together. So we're going to do lots of heart openers today. Obviously, we're going to go over names of poses and over alignment. Um, so we'll move nice and slow, starting right here in our comfortable seat with our shoulders over our hips. And just take a couple breaths in. Inhale through the nose. Swallow through the back of the throat. Feel the breath. Come into the chest. First, breathing into the belly. <clears throat> Pull the breath all the way up into the chest. As you feel the expansion, and notice if maybe you feel a little restriction. Try to ease yourself into it, breath by breath, and with every breath, allowing space, more space to enter into the lungs, more breath to enter into the lungs. And then as you exhale, letting go of tension, letting go of heaviness, stagnant breath. And then let's bring our hands together in front of the heart. Press your thumbs into your sternum to bring some sensation, therefore more awareness. Close the eyes, keep the eyes softly closed. Breathe deep into the chest and see a bright green color. The heart chakra, anahata, means unstruck. Underneath everything that we experience, all the different traumas from good to bad, um, we're unbroken underneath all of that. We remain whole. There's a piece of us there that remains unchanged through all of these different changes and transitions that we're going through. So we're going to connect to that area of ourself. The mantra yum is connected to or helps align with and attune the heart chakra. So if you're comfortable with breathing in that mantra of yum, into the heart space and letting the vibration, the sounds of that frequency, break up any of the heaviness and the tension that's keeping you from expanding, from really taking that deep, refreshing sigh of relief in. And let your breath and the mantra together sort of break up whatever that is and then exhale it out. And then we'll release our hands down to our knees or our lap somewhere and start with some seated cat cow. We want to open up this heart space in the chest and our spine in every direction during our warm up. With your inhale breath, curl the heart forward, rocking onto the front of your sit bones. Roll the shoulders back and down, support the head and the neck. And then exhale and hollow the belly, pull and curl the chin into the chest as you rock to the back of your sit bones. Stay anchored down and hollow the chest. Inhale, pull the heart forward. Once again, rocking to the front of your sit bones, imagining your rib cage opening up and fanning, bringing in that bright green breath and the vibration of yum, letting it break up any tensions you feel and then exhale that out as you begin to hollow. In and out, make this movement nice and fluid. I 
and you can let this become a little more organic. So we call this cat cow, the spine moving into extension, into flexion, and this we're doing from a seated variation. And we'll get to the other variation. And you can let this become a little more organic. Maybe you start to roll the chest around into big circles, like the rubber spatula when you're scraping out the brownie bowl and you're trying to get every last little bit, you're conforming that rubber spatula to the shape of the bowl. Imagine your body as organic and fluid as we are. We can do the same thing. Flow nice and fluid through the belly, rolling around, switch directions if you have not already. Anchor down through the sit bones. Continue to roll the shoulders, relax the head and the neck. Head and the neck can follow in tow. One more big circle, or if you're just finding that traditional cat cow in and out, that's fine too. And we'll bring our movement to a slow and steady stop. Find stillness, shoulders over hips, root down through the sit bones and inhale. Reach your arms out to the sides and overhead. Exhale into a little baby back bend. Cactus the elbows. You'll often hear this be referred to as cactus elbows. Or opening up the heart, chest expansion. Inhale, reach those arms up. We'll do two more of those. Cactus the elbows, lift the heart, contract, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then pull them down the back. Inhale, reach the arms up. One more cactus elbows, lift the heart, support the head and the neck. And then inhale, we'll reach those arms up and we're going to take a side bend over to the right side, opening up the left side body. Opening up our spine now in this different direction. As I mentioned, we're going to open up and work our spine all around in every direction. As you inhale, you can add maybe a little bit of a twist. You might come out of the depth of your fold, your side bend that you're in, not fold. And then rotate the heart gently up towards the sky, opening up just a little bit more. Big inhale breath. And then exhale and pull this arm all the way across. Stretch and reach, anchor down through your left sitting bone. Reach across through that arm. And then inhale and peel that chest right back open into your side bend. Maybe cactus that elbow back behind you, or you can still have the arm straight, whatever feels better. And then exhale and fold to the diagonal angle over that right thigh. Chest is over that thigh bone as you reach and tap the fingertips and really stretching across this side body. And we'll do one more. Anchor through the sit bone, inhale. Rotate the spine open. We're getting a side bend, we're getting a twist. And then exhale, and we're going to add a fold to all of it. Reach and reach out and stretch your chest across your right thigh as far as you can. And then tap the floor, and we're going to fold, and we're going to hold here with a few gentle sways. Um, feel natural. You can answer back, and you can answer that call. Keep anchoring down through the sit bones. Bring yourself out of the depth of your fold a little bit. Walk your hands a couple of inches in towards your body, and then walk your hands to center, and then deepen your fold. Walk yourself out. Add the gentle sways from side to side. When it gets really intense, sometimes some dynamic movement can help distract our mind in just the right way to allow us to still sit with it and be here with it without getting out of the pose immediately. And then let's walk your hands back in. We'll slowly make our way up to a tall seat. Inhale, reach those arms up to the sky. And exhale, let's take a side bend over to the left side. Your left arm's going to come down this time. Right arm reaches up and over. And we're going to semi-mimic what we did on the other side. We're reaching all the way from your sit bone as you push the sit bone down in. Spread nice and open across the side body. Cactus the elbow back, which means you might end up coming out of the depth of your side bend. Moving nice and slow, the core is engaged strongly. Huge member in all of this. The core is working to support, keeping the torso and the rib cage lifting and expanding. And then exhale, and let's go ahead and reach this first one. Anchor down through your right sit bone, reach through the right fingertips, tap, and then inhale and spread the chest back open. Cactus that elbow back, which means we bend the elbow. We roll the shoulder back. And exhale, let go of the breath. We want to make sure we're exhaling. That way we're creating space so as we fold, right? We're not running into that space issue. And then let's do one more. Lift and open. Float the chest up with the breath. Let the breath lift you up, expand. And then exhale, begin to let it go as we deepen and fold. Reach and stretch that right arm out across. Maybe even add your left arm in there. 
and the gentle little sway motion, some dynamic movement when it gets really intense. Give yourself, um, give your mind something to focus on while we're still here in the pose. We're still sitting with it. We're still feeling everything we're feeling. We're just adding some movement. And then we'll come out of the deck a little bit. Just give your hips and your knees a little more space so it's comfortable. And then we'll walk ourselves over our knees and come onto all fours. If you have a blanket, you can set a blanket up underneath your knees here just for an extra layer. And if you have blocks or any other thing around, you can use. Um, it's not super important. We will absolutely need them today. But you can have them on either side of your mat. And we'll set up into a tabletop position. Spread your fingers out wide. Tabletop is just like it looks. Shoulders over our wrists, hips over our knees. Our back is nice and flat and parallel to the floor. Spread your fingers out wide and push into every single finger pad and the L's of your hands specifically. So you're rolling the weight more towards the midline of the body, towards the L's of your hands. And, and then we'll do our cat cow from here. Our more traditional cat cow, inhale, drop the heart down, curl the sitting bones out. We have a little more room for movement, and you may notice you can get a little bit deeper. It feels a little bit different. But we're just moving in and out of the spine, and just like from your seated position, you can let this turn into a little more organic movement, especially if you're familiar with this already. If you're not a super beginner, then there's lots of other variations to start to explore, including these big barrel rolls where we roll the chest, the rib cage around, let the hips follow suit. Let the shoulders follow suit. You can tuck the toes. You can send your hips back towards your heels, more towards a child's pose, and we'll get there as well. <clears throat> One more full cycle of breath, and then we'll meet in a strong tabletop position with our shoulders over our hips, or over our wrists, and our hips over our knees. And we're just going to push it back to child's pose. If we're not familiar, this is our child's pose. Sink the hips back towards your heels. Your knees can be together. They can be slightly apart. They can be wide apart. That's not super important. It's whatever is most comfortable for you. You can add a blanket underneath the ankles or the feet to make it more comfortable and or slide a blanket, maybe a pillow in between your sit bones and your heels if it bothers the knees. And that can bring a little more support to lift up so we're not in such a deep um, knee bed there. And then let your heart melt down towards the floor. Let your head, your forehead melt down, meet, melt, excuse me, down towards the floor. If you have any type of block or prop or blanket or pillow that you want to put underneath your forehead, that's a great place for it to be. And we're just relaxing here. Child pose is really comforting for most of us because it mimics a fetal position. Okay? We're not on our side, but we're facing the floor. But we're in the same um, general position as a a fetal position which makes us feel really grounded, really comfortable, not vulnerable, right? Protected and safe. So allow yourself to feel that here for a moment because there's been, I feel like a lot of uprooting uh, of everything that we've rooted down, everything that we've been working for in our communities. A lot of that's getting uprooted right now, or at least we feel like it is. The perception is that, um, you know, a lot of everything that's happening is out of our control, we're kind of in the wind, right? Which means we're not rooted down. So allow yourself to feel safe, to feel rooted here, just remind yourself that that is exactly the perception we have. We create our reality with our perception. So remind yourself, you are safe, you are rooted, your feet are on the ground, and it's okay to feel like you're in the wind and we're uncertain and we're not sure what's happening, but that's what these poses can help us with. Right? We can couple these poses with certain emotions that we're feeling, and it can help us bring us back to reality and maybe shift our perception a little bit into something a little more um, useful for the moment because we can't stay in our emotions. Grip into your hands, pull yourself forward, come up and out of that tabletop position. And, and then we're going to walk your right hand out in front of you and your left toes behind you and then press into the floor, lifting up nice and parallel to the floor. Nothing more, not super high up. We don't want to get the heel all the way to the sky or the hand. Just parallel to the floor. Pull the navel into the spine. Push your heart space back up into the shoulder blades. Imagine nice and snug fitting your heart up into the shoulder blades. Rather than letting the heart sink down, we're sinking into the shoulder joint. Push the floor away. And then let's lower the toes and the fingers down. Tap the floor. Inhale, engage. Push the floor away and slowly lift. Exhale, bring your elbow in towards your knee as we crunch. Inhale and extend. 
This would be called balancing tabletop or a spinal balance exercise are probably the two most common um, names that I hear for this dynamic movement. Inhale and lift the fingertips. Exhale, elbow to knee. We're going to keep moving through this flow a few more times. Inhale, reach and extend. We should feel everything starting to warm up. Core move really slow. Tap the fingers and the toes. Inhale, slowly lift like an elevator, nice and slow. Exhale, elbow into your knee. Feel your heart pushing up into the back of the shoulder blades. Grip into your left hand. Inhale and reach. Let's do one more. Lower down, tap the floor with the fingers and the toes. Inhale, slowly lift with control. Exhale, elbow in towards your knee. Fire up. Good job. Inhale. Let's reach and extend. Plant your right hand down to the floor. Our left leg is still lifted up. And we're going to take it out wide to the side and plant it down. Here's where I'm going to mirror you guys. So I'm going to turn. You guys stay where you are. And we want to bring that leg out wide to the side so that our knee is aligned to the arch of the foot. Setting up for our gate position, and we'll get to that, but we're going to do a little bit of prep first. And we're just going to walk forward and back. You never want to lock your knee joint out. General rule of most postures or movements in general, we don't want to lock our joints out. We want that circulation, that blood flow to happen. And uh, you should feel this more so on the inside of that thigh. You can rock the ankle and the foot up if that feels better, really accommodating for the knee. For some of you, it might feel really good to set your hips all the way back towards your heel. That might not feel super great for some of you. And you can always add a blanket underneath this right knee as well, get a little more comfortable. Prepping to come all the way up into our gate pose. Now walk your hands in, and we're going to lift all the way up into this kneeling position. Our legs extended. We have a micro bend. The toes are turned forward. So that, that arch of the foot is a straight line to your knee, and this shoulder is a straight line down to your knee. Our tendency, I see a lot of the time, is going to be to make our stride a little too long. And you see how my shoulder is now down to the floor rather than stacking those joints together. It creates a lot more torque when we stack. Gravity becomes our friend. And then we're going to open up those arms. If you have blocks and you're using blocks, let's set one up on the inside of your knee, maybe one on the other side of your, the right side of you. So we're going to tick tock in between. Let's open up those arms, wrap those shoulder blades in, plug those upper arm bones in, and then notice the core. Our tendency here is to stick the belly out and kind of dump into the low back a little bit. So I want you to pull the navel into the spine. It's going to feel a little bit like you're tucking your tailbone underneath, but you'll feel those glute muscles really engage and tuck up underneath you and hold and pull everything into the midline. And that's what we want to feel, this really strong pull in towards the midline of the body and rooting down from the foundation. We always build our poses from the ground up and then we're going to hinge and reach out all the way across reaching across the horizon line so notice i'm not right away diving into this side bend i'm reaching across the horizon line trying to stay pretty horizontal pretty parallel to the floor keeping the space from my hip crease here all along the side body up to my armpit and then I'm going to slowly begin to tick tock my arm without completely coming down and crushing and crashing in on this side body. I want to keep that space from the hip crease along the side body. I call it a lane. You have two long lanes in your side bodies. Good. And then wrap your right shoulder back and down, kind of gluing that shoulder blade onto the upper back. This is a really strong pose, even though it may not look like it from the naked eye. Can be deceiving. A lot of yoga poses are. Inhale, arms to center, and go ahead and relax those arms down. And we'll just roll the shoulders up. You should feel that river of blood flow coming back into the arms, and we're going to go ahead and open those arms back up. And we're going to tick tock, quick little cartwheel to the other side where we stack that right shoulder right on top of the wrist, so we don't want it too far in front of us. And then reach and stretch left arm up to the sky and up and over the head. Rotate your palm down towards the ground. And that's going to help you, uh, your shoulder, so that you're not open. We're going to reach the fingers across, rotate palm down, and then rotate the heart up. Avoid kind of sinking and hanging out in that right shoulder. If your shoulder is near your neck, near your cheek, push the floor away a little bit more. 
And we're going to take this left hand and we're going to reach it all the way back, using it as help as if someone's pulling you up, giving you a little help to pull you back up to center. And then release those arms down. And you can plant your hands forward once again in front of you. We're going to engage this left leg pretty strongly and lift the toes, bend the knee, and step the foot forward into a lunge position. And then as you uh, lean the hips forward into your lunge, you can arrange your knee over the ankle, that is scooting the toes forward a little bit, whatever we've got to do to eventually land with the knee arranged over the ankles, you can have locks in your hands and our legs are in separate lanes. Okay, so they have separate tracks here, we're not on one rear train track because our hips have space in between them, we need to accommodate for that space. And then walk your hands up onto the top of your thigh, interlacing them together. And we're just going to do a couple baby pulses. Little pulse in and then release. Little pulse in, melt the hips forward, lift the heart, relax the shoulders down, and then lift it back. We're hugging those inner thighs together in towards the midline of the body, building our pose from the ground up, anchoring down through your back knee, your front foot, and then that scissoring action is what's giving you the lift up through the midline. And let's release our hands down to either blocks or the floor and walk your hips back, walk your hands back into half split. As I turn, you'll see my hips are passing my knee joint, which is putting a lot of torque and pressure in my knees. So I'm going to slide my left hip forward a couple of inches and bring my pelvis forward so that eventually that hip is going to stack right on top of your knee. And that should feel a lot better for you. From here, you're hinging the hip crease back and you're reaching and elongating the heart and the spine forward. So we're pulling the body apart essentially in opposing directions. And then let's pedal the foot forward and back. Half split pose, because it looks obviously like we're about to come into that full split position, prep for full splits pose. Just find a little bit of movement because there's a ton of muscles on the posterior chain, the back side of that leg that we can target. And you'll feel, obviously, a multitude of different areas of the leg as you stretch. And let's do one more. Work your way back to that flex position where the toes are pulled back towards your shin bones. Slide your heel back a couple of inches if you made the modification. Set your foot down and we'll guide the hips forward. We may not end up perfect. We may have to rearrange knee right over the ankle. Just a general rule doesn't have to be perfect. Hug the inner thighs together and inhale. Let's reach the arms up to the sky. And then bring those palms together in front of the heart space. We're going to begin to twist towards your thigh to the left side. Twist, twist, twist from the strength of your core. Another common mistake we make during our yoga practice or during twists is we use our arms. Then we're going to bring the elbow towards your knee. Careful that you don't have this urge immediately. You might have this urge to press into your palms and crank using your shoulders and your upper back to twist, twist, twist and get deeper into the spine. But notice how your arms are supporting that rather than your core. It's your core's job to protect the spine. So anytime we're in a twist, seated, standing, a lunge twist, anytime, you can check the core. Pop the elbow up away from your knee or whatever you're on and make sure your body, your torso, remains in that twisted position. There's going to be a little bit of snapback, a little bit of movement is going to happen, and that's fine. We just don't want to make want a dramatic movement where we can obviously tell that we were using our arms to crank our spine into this really unstable position. And then inhale, let's come out of this, squeeze into those legs, root down, inhale, arms will reach up to the sky, and then circle them down and find the floor. Tuck your back toes underneath, lift that back knee, and step forward, come into a forward fold, Uttanasana, and just shake it out a little bit. Forward bend, forward fold, standing forward fold. There's lots of names that are very similar that you will hear this be called. It's all this, this forward fold. Just giving ourselves a quick break, aligning the legs. A weird little thing that might happen is that left leg is going to feel a lot longer than the right since we stretch those muscles. So you'll set your left foot a couple of inches in front of your right, but neurologically it'll feel correct. So just align your feet, make sure the feet are aligned, 
Close your eyes and notice the difference you feel behind the legs. And then bend your knees dramatically, laying your belly and your rib cage into your thighs. Your hips are going to sit back towards it like a chair pose, like you're sitting back into a chair. And then we're going to reach our arms up out to the sides. Our back is nice and flat. Push down through your feet and hinge your way up. Start to lift the shoulders nice flat back through the whole motion. Scoop those arms up to the sky. Palms come together and then down in front of the heart. Putting all of those moves together to create one smooth hinge up. Reverse swan dive is what that's often referred to, which you'll hear it be cued as. We're swan diving our way up, reaching those arms out to the side. And then we're just standing here. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, Tadasana pose. Another very uh, common staple foundation pose of our yoga practice, which is overlooked a lot of the time because it doesn't seem like much. A lot of the time we're like, oh, I want to work hard. I want to sweat. I want to get my workout in. And that's great. So we overlook the importance of this stability right here. As I was saying earlier, right now, we're kind of in the wind a little bit. We're uncertain about what's going to happen with our businesses, our homes, school, everything going on. So we feel very uprooted, very vulnerable, very not in control of our life. And so this pose right here is going to give us a little bit of life, a little bit of roots. So as you imagine those roots growing from your feet, Press your palms back into your sternum as we remind ourselves of the heart chakra here, represented by the color green. See it expand in your chest and maybe notice if you can breathe a little bit easier, maybe we can expand a little bit more than we could in the very beginning of class. Root down through your feet. Hug your thighs in together. Navel pulls into the spine, sending the tailbone in a downward direction just slightly. And then inhale, and we're going to reach those arms all the way back up to the sky through that circle sweep motion. Lift your heart up towards your palms. And then exhale, and we'll swan dive instead of reverse swan dive. Swan dive, let your knees bend if you need to to keep your back straight. It's more important that your spine stays nice and straight and supported. Let your knees bend as you pull. Beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift. Another common cue, a common pose you'll see in your yoga classes is going to be this halfway forward fold. So we're not all the way in our forward fold. We call it halfway lift because we're lifting up halfway to our um, Tadasana pose. And then your exhale breath, your knees will soften once again as you forward fold. And try to deepen your fold here if you can. Gently draw the crown of your head towards your toes by engaging your hip flexors to fold the body into itself. And then plant your hands down to the floor. Bend your knees nice and deep so you can come all the way down to all fours. And we'll do that whole other side, that whole sequence on the other side. Let's start with your left fingertips forward and your right toes behind you. This is our balancing tabletop or our spinal balance exercise. It's going to be our two most common names. And then we're going to lower down, tap the fingers, tap the toes, slow with control, lift, exhale, elbow to push the floor away. Check in with your right hand that the fingers are spread really wide and you're pushing down through every finger pad to even the weight across the hand. And lower down, tap the floor, inhale, lift, exhale, elbow to knee, bring it in. One more inhale, reach. Lower down, tap the fingers and the toes to the floor simultaneously. It's a lot of coordination, so take your time. Exhale, elbow to knee, warming up the whole body. Reach and extend. We always come out of our poses the way we came into it, not always, most of the time. And then plant your left hand back down to the floor, right underneath the shoulder. Your right leg is still extended. Here's where we're going to float it out to the right side of your body. Set the foot down. So that the arch of your foot makes a straight line into your knee. I'll turn and face you guys. You guys stay right where you are. <clears throat> and first, we'll just do a couple prep rounds by rocking forward and back like we did on the other side. If you need to, add a blanket underneath your knee, or if you don't have a blanket, roll your mat up. That way, you've got two extra layers now of your mat underneath your knee. I should have showed you guys that on the other side, but here we are. And then we're going to slowly work our way up to our gate position. 
solidifying the pose because we always build from the ground up from the foundation so we hug the inner thighs together which is already pulling my navel up into my low back into my spine and then i walk my hands in and we're going to come all the way up notice if that shoulder goes straight down to the knee or if we have this tendency to kind of really widen our stride a little too much bring it in solidify it condense it in a little bit arms will open up plug those shoulder blades in and then notice that we don't dump the belly forward and we have that tendency to kind of pull the belly forward pull the navel into the spine just like it also it feels like you're tucking the tailbone underneath just slightly but that's okay and it really kicks those glutes on and pulls them in and then we're going to hinge out across, reaching for the horizon line. We're not right away cartwheeling into this pose, not for this variation, not that this isn't correct. Um, but for this variation, we're going to just float our way, cruise our way along the horizon line. Keep hugging the inner thighs together. I'm lifting up through the pelvic floor muscle, pulling everything, coiling up in. And then I slowly drop that right arm down, left arm up. The lanes, my side lanes here, nice and long, as long as I can have them be. And holding this pose, really strong. Another deceiving pose of yoga where we look at someone else doing it and we're like, oh, that's easy. But then when we're doing it, we're like, this isn't that easy. And let's slowly bring it up if you have a block or a prop. And we're going to slowly cartwheel our way down to the other side. And again, I want to keep length along the bottom side of my rib, rib cage, which may mean even going on a little bit longer. And then point your palm down and pull the shoulder up and across, framing the shoulder to your ear and really opening up along this serratus anterior muscle in the side body, this rib cage. If it feels good, wrapping the heart up towards the sky and pulling the shoulder back and down. And then we'll wave this right arm all the way back across, pretending someone was there to help you up. And nice float all the way up. Relax those arms down. Roll them out. We're going to plant our hands down in front of us, our wrists underneath the shoulders, my fingers spread wide. Anytime I'm connected to the floor, I'm building a pose from the ground up, right? So you want to be really connected, really grounded where you are, whatever it is, your knee, your hands, your feet, your back. And then take that right leg and engage, engage, engage on the outside of the leg, the abductor muscles that were being abducted all the way out to the side, alien, and then step it forward. And then we're going to work your way into, it might not be perfect right away. <clears throat> you want your knee approximately over your ankle. You might scoot your toes forward or kind of work your back knee back. And that mat trick here is always good. Hold the mat over and you've got a second layer for your back or your third layer for your back knee. And then let's interlace your hands up on top of your thigh. Try to interlace with your opposite thumb on top and work your way into some little pulses. One tendency I see here will end up clenching the jaw, will end up pulling the shoulders up into the ears. So try to relax the shoulders down, swallow through the back of your throat, and remind yourself to relax tension out of the jaw. And then take that theory of relaxing tension all the way down to the feet. And notice if you're death gripping the mat with your toes, if you're gripping with your toes, and lift the toes up. And notice the arch of the foot lifts, and we've created this bridge. Find the four corners of your bridge. Big toe ball mount across to the pinky toe ball mount, inside and outside edge of the foot. That's going to be our four corners of the feet. And that's going to be a cue you hear a lot, not only in lunges, but in tadasana and chirps. A lot of poses will hear that cue of finding the four corners of the feet. So we want to find on our body what that feels like for us. And you can take the leg and weevil and wobble it from side to side and really feel what that means for you. And then relax the toes back down. Good. Let's take our hands down to frame that right foot. We're going to walk the hands back, walk the hips back into our half split. Just like I demonstrated before, not everyone, but most people, your hip is going to pass your knee and that puts a lot more torque and pressure on your knee than is necessary for this pose. So we walk forward until my hip is directly stacked right on top of the knee joint, not sinking behind it. 
shift it forward a little bit, and it's a whole new world. It's those small little modifications, small little shifts in perspective that make a, the whole difference for us. Okay, just like right now, we feel like we are up in the wind, completely being uprooted, everything we've been working for um, is at stake, but that's just one perspective. Okay, and it's a, a shared perspective because we're all, you know, we all feed off of each other's energy. So if we could pause for a moment and we could shift that perspective of ours and we could ground ourselves, then we could start to become more of an anchor in energy for others as well. Start to move that foot around if you aren't already, kind of exploring the same avenues that we did with the other side. You'll notice that this side doesn't feel the exact same because right away we just have to um, accept, universally accept that we are not symmetrical beings. We weren't born or designed or built to be symmetrical. And I think we know that because we are right-handed and left-handed and we have dominant things going on. So we pretty much accept that about ourselves. But that's a, a fun lesson that we learn a lot of in our yoga practice is how to balance the difference between our sides. It's really important because we're striving for balance, um, not only mind, body, spirit, but physically. Slide your heel back, step into your foot, walk yourself forward into your lunge, make all your minor adjustments. Don't wait for a teacher to tell you to adjust. You know your knee needs to be over your ankle, so arrange your knee over your ankle when you get there. Hug the inner thighs together. We're gonna come all the way up, scissor those inner thighs together, anchor through your back knee, anchor through the four corners of your front foot. I'm gonna yell at you because there's a train. And then we're gonna reach those arms all the way up to the sky. And then exhale, cactus the elbows, lift the heart. We make little goal post elbows and we pull and slingshot the heart through and up. We're weebling and we're wobbling around and that's perfectly normal and perfect. We wanna absorb all those little weebles and wobbles. They help us build coordinates of strength and balance. And let's inhale, reach those arms up. Plant your hands down to the floor. Tuck your back toes underneath so you can lift your back knee up. And we're gonna step your left foot forward, come to the top of your space, into your forward fold, your Uttanasana. Our forward bend, whatever you wanna call it, we'll, be, we'll hear it be called multiple names, but this is the gist of our fold. Let your knees softly bend, find some buoyancy in the hips perhaps. Here is always a good time to find the four corners of your feet whenever we're standing on our feet. Flick the toes up towards the sky, spread them out if you can, which you might find is a lot harder than you think. It's not quite like spreading out our fingers, right? Some of those toes don't listen and we have to train them, just like any other muscle in the body. It's a mind-muscle connection thing. Find your four corners, big toe ball mount, pinky toe ball mount, inside and outside edge of your heel, not a perfect um, square or triangle or rectangle, obviously, but you get what I'm saying. And then release the toes back down to the floor. A lot of the time the toes are there for balance. They're not for weight bearing. We don't want to shift our weight into the toes. We want our weight to be back over the arches of the feet. The toes are there to catch us when we're about to fall over. They're for balance. All right, bend your knees. We're going to come back up through our reverse swan dive. Round two to practice this. Send the hips down, your spine comes up nice and flat, arms come out to the sides like we're flapping our wings like a swan, and we come all the way up now, hinge up from your hips, begin to straighten the legs, slight tuck of the tailbone underneath, feels like you're pulling your tailbone down to your heels, reach and lift the heart up towards your thumbs. And then exhale and bring your hands together in front of the heart and really sink your energy, your weight, all of that down into the feet and feel yourself root. Pause here in our Tadasana. Check in. Again, your uh, legs might be playing tricks on you. Notice if you put one foot in front of the other, which is perfectly normal. It's just kind of funny to see when it happens. And then align your feet back together. Close your eyes. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Press your thumbs into your sternum bone just to bring more sensation, therefore more awareness. Wherever we have sensation in the body, naturally our awareness follows because we're like, oh, what's going on over here? We feel something happening. So we're gonna go investigate and see what it is that we feel and see if we need to do something about it. 
And that happens physically a lot, right? When we're starting to get into something maybe opposed too deep and we're starting to feel some pain and the body starts to give you signals and says, hey, what's going on over here? Let's investigate. How do we act accordingly? Do we need to come out of the pose? Do we need to adjust? Same with our emotions. We don't necessarily see it the same way because it's harder to pinpoint those emotions because it's not obvious pain in the body sometimes. Sometimes it is. But our emotions are the same way. We kind of get in there and, and we get curious and we investigate. And we're like, what's going on in here? What are we feeling? We feel something happening. It's like the check engine light. That's my newest favorite analogy of the heart space because the heart is kind of like the engine of this body, whereas our brain is kind of like the chip. Let's inhale and reach those arms to the sky. We're going to do our reverse swan dive. Let your knees softly bend. Your arms reach out to the sides. Your spine stays nice and long. We hinge forward nice and slow. Create good habits in the body. Inhale to your halfway lift. Your next breath, you'll come right up into your halfway lift, floating the body up parallel to the floor. And exhale again. Bend your knees as you fold. Let your body melt over the thighs, creating healthy habits for the spine and the low back. Then bend your knees and come all the way down to your bottom. And we're going to come down to our backs. And we're going to do some quick twists and take a shavasana because we have only a few minutes left. Let's lay down on your mat, hug your knees in towards your chest, and just rock and roll them out a little bit. Just see how that feels. And where sensation is in the body, naturally your awareness is going to go there too to start to investigate. And then hug your left knee into your chest first. Left knee. We always want to go to the right, twist our body to the right first, remembering right is right when it comes to twisting, not always, but right is right. Because of the flow of the digestive system, we want to follow along with the natural flow, right? We don't want to try to back it up and go the opposite way of the, the lazy river. We get that resistance, and we don't want to cause resistance in the body. We want to help it flow the way it's supposed to. Take your left knee across the body as we twist. Anchor your right shoulder blade in, focusing more on keeping your shoulders and your upper back to the floor, then getting your knee all the way down to the floor. And another pose where if, we, if it's new to us, we don't know what's important, right? These are these questions that we want to ask. Are we supposed to get our knee to the floor? Are we supposed to have our shoulder to the floor? Is it supposed to be both? If you have both, that's great. Otherwise, we want to keep the shoulder down to the floor for this variation. It's not always wrong. I never like to tell anyone what they're doing is always wrong, unless it hurts. If it hurts, please come out of it. Please find a modification and a way to do the pose differently. Otherwise, we keep the shoulder blade grounded for this variation, and you can put a blanket if there's some space between your knee and the floor and that bothers you if you don't like the way maybe our spine is kind of hanging in space in this twist. Uh, then you can add more support, and you can put a block, a blanket, any prop you have, underneath your knee to give you more support. Coming out, we're going to bring your head back to center if it's turned at all. Anchor through the core. You're going to engage the core and start to roll the back down, which is still your core. We think of the core as just our front body, but it's the back side of the torso as well. The back, as we lay it down, slowly control the hips, our center of gravity, setting them down to the floor nice and gently, and then bend both of your knees and give yourself a big squeeze of loving compassion, and let your spine and each individual vertebra come back to neutral, and we'll take the other side. This time, hug your right knee into your chest, because as we take it across the body, it's going to be going to the left. So when we're doing this on our own, we always can remember uh, in our mind, right is right. So when you get to your reclined twists to follow the flow of your digestive system, bring your legs over to the right side of the body first. And then we take this right knee and we're going to sweep it across the body. My right shoulder blade is anchored down. And we come over and across. When that shoulder starts to peel up off of the floor, that's our indication. That's our stopping point. We push the shoulder blade back down. And we let the knee pop up off the floor. That's fine. It doesn't have to touch. If it does, great. Bonus. You can throw a block or blanket underneath, too, if this needs to be a little more relaxing for you. I know for some of us, holding this leg up in space. It's not super relaxing and it's hard to find the element of surrender 
which is what we're trying to do here because we're lying down and nearing the end of our practice. So we want to start to let the muscles relax rather than uh, keep working them. Let's bring your head back to center if you found any other variation. And we'll slowly control, feel the back, slowly connecting to the floor and the hips, slowly connecting and then bend both knees. Give yourself a hug, maybe pull your forehead up towards your knees and then getting ready for the all favorite happy baby pose. I personally don't really like happy baby because it doesn't feel great for me. So if it doesn't feel great for you, which every pose is not gonna feel great for you, and that doesn't mean something is wrong with your body or wrong with you. It's just that not every pose is for everybody. So I prefer more of a baddha konasana, a butterfly pose, as you probably know it as. You bring your feet together, you let your knees go wide, and kind of push your elbows into your knees, find any little motions and movements that feel good. Happy baby. Be traditional happy baby you're going to have the soles of your feet up towards the sky so there's a little more hip flexion involved and for me that's where it gets sticky because when I lift my legs up like that my uh, sacrum comes off the mat and it puts a lot of pressure in my spine and that doesn't feel good at all for me so I have to lower it down which sends my legs down which is fine then grab your shin bones or your ankles or maybe you can loop your peace fingers around your big toes and you can still lean back. I can get into it. It's just not super comfortable for me. I don't like to hold it. And when you're ready, go ahead and release. And we'll take a couple minutes of Shavasana, just a short, like, two-minute Shavasana. And then I have a couple announcements for you guys. But we'll settle into Shavasana for lack of a better um, – word or translation, it's corpse pose or full relaxation. Um, but since we don't really like the word corpse usually, we'll use full relaxation, total relaxation pose. As you get here, let your palms rotate up towards the sky and see how that makes you feel. Does that trigger any type of anxiety within you at all? Maybe you don't notice anything at all. Try turning your palms down. That's a little more grounding. See how that feels. If that makes you feel a little bit better in your body and in your energy today, you might need to ground a little bit more. Having the palms open is going to be a gesture of receiving, which we might not really be in a state that we want to open up our energy to receive anything because we're already in a pretty uncertain state. If you want to ground, palms down. Or having them over the body is really comforting. And you'll notice that if you put the hands over the body, maybe one over your heart, one over your belly. Feels a lot more comforting, a lot more soothing, self-soothing here. And that might be your sweet spot for your Shavasana. Wiggle the toes a little bit. Make sure the legs are completely relaxed. Unclench your glute muscles underneath you. Glutes are always trying to help out and we're laying on them directly. So just notice if they're still working, still trying to support you a little bit and let them squish into the mat. Let your upper back melt into the mat. Relax your head. Relax your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Swallow through the back of your throat really gently and send that wave of relaxation all the way down. Beginning to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes, keeping your eyes closed and bringing that internal awareness to the outskirts of the body. Begin to roll out your wrists and your ankles, feeling more your energy connecting together, bringing that physical energy, our intellectual energy, our thinking mind, our, our um, spiritual energy, that sense of self, that connection we have to the heart space that is connected to every other being, letting that all begin to yoke together because we are a uh, multitude, this multifaceted um, being created by all these different energies together. 
And then hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze as we begin our transition out. And make your way up to a comfortable seated position. You don't have to be cross-legged. You can be sitting up on your knees or you can just have your legs out in front of you, especially if this is um, starting to bother the hips or the knees at all. And then bring your hands together in front of your heart. Traditionally, we end our practice in Anjali Mudra, which is this prayer position in front of the heart space, honoring our divine being that is there in the heart, underneath all of the traumatic experiences and things that shape our individual personalities that we all have. Underneath all of that, it remains this unstruck, this whole being, this sense of self that is all powerful and all knowing. And we share that with every other being. So as we bow into that in Anjali Mudra, we're honoring that sense of divinity within ourselves. that is the same in every single being. And then of course, I thank you for letting me guide you through your practice today and um, hanging out, learning some poses with me. And I hope to see you again next week. Namaste. A couple quick announcements just to keep everyone updated daily about what's going on because um, we're updating things daily and getting new information daily. As of right now, we're still planning on holding our first physical class in the studio on May 11th. We will be able to have three members, already members. Um, right now, we're only going to have members only in the studio. Um, just makes things easier. So uh, if you have a punch, par, a punch card or a membership, then you'll be able to sign up via Schedulicity. So if you get on the website, big red button on the front page, Schedulicity, you can set up your account there, super easy. Or you can message me, let me know if you have any complications, I'll help you. And then you can sign up there. The first, it's first come, first serve. So the first three members um, will be able to come into the studio and then you will get um, bumped to a wait list. In the wait list, you will receive a link to attend the class live via Zoom. So to prepare for that, you'll also need to download the Zoom app. Also really easy. You get on your app store, look up Zoom. It's really big right now, so it'll probably be one of the first ones to pop up. And you download that, make a quick account. It's free. You can do it on your phone, your computer, tablet, works on almost anything. So make yourself a quick account on there. Um, and then once you have those two things up and running, it's just a couple of clicks uh, to get signed up. And uh, yeah, if you have any complications, let me know. Right now we have the schedule for next week for Zoom up there. Me and Christy will be um, starting off just a few classes a week in the studio to warm things up and just see how, how things go. So yeah, I'm really excited to get back into the studio with you guys. Message me if you have any questions or concerns. Also, if you wanna sign up for class and you are one of the first three, but you don't want to physically come to class, you just want the Zoom link, then um, message me and I can get that set up for you also. So you don't have to come into the studio also if you don't want to, because if you're not comfortable, we absolutely want to accommodate you still without um, you having to come to the studio. So yeah, have a great night, guys. Thank you so much. I'll be back Tuesday morning at 9.15 to do a vinyasa flow with you guys. Have a good night.